Um, so this session is called What Happens to Teens When Grandma Joins Facebook, or Bay Swiped Right, and it was a lot of <laughs> <laughs> So see, everyone else, everyone else is in boring sessions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. This is where it's at. This is where it's at. Um, so about me, my name is Chelsea Rovesti. Um, my Twitter handle is at Chelsea Robo. I am actually the manager of social media at Point Park University. Um, so previously, I was in the agency world at Mark USA and Kate Plus Stadium. And I think that I am qualified to speak on this topic because I was also once a teen. So, in the beginning, Mark Zuckerberg made Facebook. And it was good. Uh, let's start by taking a look at modern social media. So, of course, there was Friendster and MySpace and forums and live journals back in the day. Um, but arguably, you could say that Social Network really got its big start um, whenever Facebook caught on. Two computers here. Um, so then Steve Jobs created what we could call the modern smartphone. Um, when the iPhone came out, it was revolutionary. Um, you couldn't have apps. You couldn't have anything else on the BlackBerry. I remember my first BlackBerry and it was a brick and it made noises like this. <laughs> You're still on one? No, no, no. <laughs> I've moved on, but I remember. Yeah, oh yeah, but I have I thought I was like the bee's knees, yeah, so yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I can look stuff up on the internet in five minutes. <laughs> my loads. Uh, um, so you, we can argue that the modern smartphone really kind of changed social media. And it really becomes apparent whenever you start looking at um, when a lot of these um, social networks were introduced. Because at first, Facebook was introduced in 2004. Um, YouTube was not far behind in 2005. In 2007, the first, first friend, um, our iPhone. And really, in the 2010s is when things started to kind of explode. So Instagram came in 2010, uh, 2011, Snapchat and Google Plus. 2012 brought Vine, and in 2013, um, Yik Yak was introduced. You don't have uh, LO on there. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I don't have LO on there. You know, I, I, I got LO recently, and I logged into it once. So, I didn't include it this time, but probably next time around. Whenever it gets big and is the Facebook killer, it'll be on my next uh, presentation. So, um, I have a short video here that I thought was really interesting. It came through in my feed the other day. A free employee oh, cart, so you're picking up dinner. Deal, where are we going? Downstairs, the pizza guy is waiting. It's gonna be a late one. So much for my juice cleanse. This is kind of self-explanatory, but pretty funny. I feel like it's mostly for like older people, like my grandparents and my parents. Uh, it's more of like when you're older, a lot of people use Facebook. It's not really a kid's thing. I know my parents use it. I don't think it's as commonly used in our generation because we use other social media apps that are newer, like Instagram. I think Facebook, I wouldn't say that it's not cool, but I think it's also, I think that like Snapchat and Instagram and Tumblr, they're taking over. My mom always told me I shouldn't use Facebook because again, with Instagram, she knows I'm getting I'm gonna do something with it, but also it's because it's more her friends there, and she thinks if I'm on there, maybe that I might send something there that's like cute, but maybe my mom doesn't want to send it because it's like a surprise or something. But I think Facebook um, can be very is very social, but I think it can be very treacherous. You know, I don't have Facebook either. Uh, the reason why I think it is a live drama, and that's how drama starts, is on social media, and then the next day it's uh, yeah. somebody's trying to fight somebody or has a problem on, on social media. So. I think that it's just another way for hackers to access your personal pictures, and I, I just don't think that it's necessarily safe. It's more of a distraction, it's another way, and it's another um, password I have to remember. I think Facebook is kind of gonna like die out. Its interest is not gonna be like high anymore. I think by the time I am old enough that um, I will have the ability to use it, Facebook will be long back and won't be used anymore at all. It will probably be like MySpace, where there's still like a couple of people that use it, but it'll just be like, eh. 
So um, you can see kind of what, what at least a small handful of kids um, are saying about Facebook. And some of the data actually really backs this up. Um, Facebook definitely does have a team problem. We can use the double miles we get with our Spark Miles card to fly to that trade show in Omaha. Of course you're showing We could use them to take a vacation. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Facebook really does have kind of a team problem. Um, I love this graph because it shows uh, social media usage among teens from fall 2012 to spring 2014. Uh, so you can see in fall 2012, which is blue, um, the percent of respondents, 40% of them said they use Facebook, and it just continues to go down, 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 down. While Instagram from fall 2012 to spring 2014 is just continuing to rise. Um, Twitter kind of does a little bobble thing, um, but it's pretty crazy how drastically Facebook is falling and Instagram is rising. Um, there are some other ones on here too that kind of remain the same or kind of go back and forth. Poor little Google Plus down here, I don't know what he's doing. Um, continuing to be small. So. They're not, you know, as you saw in the video, my parents are on Facebook and they're watching me and they told me not to use Facebook. Um, teens want to use social networks to interact with their peers only. Um, in a recent survey by McAfee, 97% um, of participants visited YouTube on a weekly basis and 92% of them visited Instagram. Um, in the same survey, 90% of those respondents said that they believe that their parents um, trust what they're doing online, but 45% of them said that they would change their behavior if they knew their parents were watching. Um, so it makes sense that they tend to shy away from Facebook um, because that's where mom, dad, and grandma are hanging out. And they can keep a close eye on them. Um, so what are they using? Uh, I'm going to dive into a little bit some of these networks. So Instagram, Snapchat, Vine, YouTube. Um, Tumblr is another one that I'm not really going to dive into, but um, definitely being used by teens a lot. So teens, they, you know, They've grown up in this sort of digital age and they've been warned that anything they put online will follow them around and it's really scary and, you know, like the kid said, hackers will get you if you put your pictures online. Um, so they've been warned about their digital footprint and they're drawn to apps where they're given kind of a false sense of privacy and anonymity. <laughs> they're anonymous, um, let's say that. Um, that word always gets me. So, um, in these next few slides, I'm going to give you a rundown of some of these apps and how they're being used. And I'll also show you some examples um, of some of the videos and vines and things going on with them. Um, so Snapchat. 36.8% of 14 to 17 year olds are using Snapchat. 20.8% of 18 to 34 year olds are also using Snapchat. So why do they like Snapchat? In case you're not familiar with Snapchat, um, it is a photo messaging app where you can draw on yourself or write. Uh, the thing about it is you send these photos to your friends and they disappear and the maps you can put them up is for 10 seconds. Um, so to teens, it, it's there and it's gone. It goes away, there's no record of it. It's not in the Facebook album anywhere. Um, no one can find it and share it. To them, it's seemingly transient, but um, sometimes it's not. Uh, recently, if you guys saw anything in the news, um, in the past couple months, there was a large leak of um, new celebrity photos that, that leaked. Um, a hacker got to them, Jennifer Lawrence, tons of people were involved. At this, around the same time, there was also a big Snapchat leak called The Snappening, um, where through a third party app, uh, a hacker got through and released a ton of um, screenshotted Snapchats. That's the other thing about Snapchat, too, is that you can screenshot, but there are some third-party apps that make it really secret, and usually if you screenshot the, if, you, if I send a Snapchat and someone screenshotted it, I'd get an alert, but with these third-party apps, I'm screenshotting and it's not sending that alert. Um, so it's seemingly transient to teens, and they're sending lots of different things, and, but it's not really all that private. Uh, Yik Yak is another really new one, and this is actually something that I'm coming across um, working on a college college campus, something I monitor, but it's very difficult. So um, it's really new, it's an anon anonymous network, and in fact it's so anonymous that you don't even have to create a username to be on it. 
um, you just put in your cell phone number, and it's essentially an anonymous Twitter. So it's based on location, which is why it's so popular in college campuses. Um, and you can see if you're reading any of these yik yaks, these are even these are some of the tame ones. Um, this is a really tame screen grab. Um, it gets pretty rowdy on there. So people also think that this is anonymous, and they post jokes and. Um, for example, Penn State, there was a guy who said on Yik Yak that he was going to um, kill everyone. I believe it was at the Hub, um, which is like their student, big student center. And the police came, came to his door, obviously, and found him. And he was surprised. He was like, what, what, what are you guys doing at my, at my apartment? You posted a threat on Yik Yak. Um, so they think that these apps are anonymous, but they're really not. In regards to Flint Park, when you see things on there, I live near Robert Morris, so yeah. I see people comment about professors and people who work on the campus. Do you alert the different departments if someone says, hey, you know, something happened? Or? Yeah, we, have a, we definitely have a protocol. Um, I monitor Yik Yak. The thing about um, Point Park and Duquesne and the colleges in the area, yeah. they don't have their own centralized hubs. A lot yeah. of colleges will have, there, is there a Robert Morris yeah. hub? Yeah. Um, for some reason, Point Park, in which I'm grateful but not grateful, um, they don't have their, their home. So sometimes it's difficult to know right. who's talking about what, but if there are specific instances or specific cases, um, I definitely notify um, our student life team or whoever it kind of relates to. How frequent are you get posts that, that you find locally? Is it a lot? Now, no. Um, and like I said, it's it's hard to tell, you know, a student could be talking about another student and not mentioning it names or But you like Riley, like you could go like three days, like, like I think it posts up like some really like, little time stamp. Yeah. You could go three days between the posts, so it's not as Oh, used, they're think. they're definitely more frequent down here, okay. I would say. Okay. Like um, there was an instance actually recently where um, I had seen one in the morning um, before I was checking it before work and I came into work and it was already gone. Um, so you can't, you have to screen grab right away when you see them. Um, it only lets you search so far back, too. So that's something else to keep in mind about Yik Yak. Um, but I haven't seen many um, that directly relate to Point Park. Um, but there are a lot, if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, that's been our experience so far. Um, so even though teens kind of want to be anonymous per se, they still want to share with each other um, and even more prevalent. So do you guys remember the good old days when teen girl bullying was done face to face and through word of mouth in school? Um, well, now it's done on Instagram. Um, a lot of teen girls are using Instagram to kind of find out what their friends really think of them, um, kind of popularity contests. They give shout outs to their besties and their profile. Um, they create elaborate birthday collages, collages for their BFFs on their birthdays. So um, it can be a catty place and a scary place for teens. And it's also, I found, um, even with some of our students, it's easy to get a very large following on Instagram if you're, if you're young and attractive, which is not totally shocking. Um, but it's definitely a place where teens are more privy to sharing because I don't think mom and dad are on there checking Instagram. They're on Facebook. Um, so again, another one of those. So this is a really interesting one, YouTube. So in these screen grabs, this is Shane Dawson. Have, have any of you ever heard of him? OK. So he is actually kind of Shane, if you're watching. Hi, I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> um, so he is actually kind of the inspiration for why I wanted to talk about this. Um, are you, any of you guys familiar with the chair on stars? All right. <laughs> so that's why you know Shane Yeah, that's how I know him, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was actually filmed at Point Park. And I, while I wasn't here, while it was being filmed and he was on campus and all that, I did get to meet him afterwards um, whenever he um, came to campus for the premiere. Um, so he's actually created pretty much an empire um, making YouTube videos. He he has more than 12 million subscribers, 3 million Twitter followers, um, and it makes sense because a lot of these young teens, they're not really looking for celebrity, celebrity endorsements. Like, those don't get you as far anymore. They want to hear from 
people they like online, um, people whose videos they think are interesting. Um, they're really drawn to him. So actually, if I segue into a small story, um, these double computers are killing me. So I was working on at Point Park, and we were live tweeting um, the premiere of the chair, which is the he was premiering. No, we were premiering the chair and um, showing a few episodes of the Southside Works, and people were getting tickets and everything. So I was there live tweeting. And there was a girl, she's this girl in this photo right here. Uh, she was tweeting and tweeting and tweeting at Punk Park. Oh my God, Shane Dawson, oh my God, I need to be there. Oh my God, can I get a ticket? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Um, freaking out. So she actually waited until, you know, we said sorry, there aren't any tickets, you know, it's all full. Um, maybe Shane will be around after the show. This was at six that this started. She waited outside the Southside Works, and it got like, kind of cold that night. Um, she waited outside the Southside Works till 10, just so she could get a photo with Shane, which you can see right here. Shane posted this photo. She, he took a selfie with her, posted it on his Instagram. And I followed this girl just because I, so, I was so intrigued by like her obsession and everything. Um, this, you would have, like, this would be like if Beyonce <laughs> gave me a shout out. You know, like that's how excited I would be. Um, if Bay herself. So she's kind of like the inspiration. She's just Shane, her, and you, and this random fan of the inspiration for this talk. Um, so if you look at her Instagram too, all she has is pictures of Shane Dawson. Um, <laughs> everywhere. And there are hundreds more like this. Hundreds. Um, so you have to think, well, What's, what's so great about this Shane Dawson? What, what's he doing? He must be doing really awesome stuff. Um, let me give you an example of one of his YouTube videos. And um, you can note that it has 300,000 views and it was posted on November 18th. Yes. But you have to watch it. Anyway. Anyway. Out of a One Direction concert by police after being mobbed by fans. 
again, I would only mob Beyonce if I saw her <laughs> at the One Direction concert. Um, and you can see that you know, it's not just young teen boys on YouTube that are becoming stars. It's, it's, young, it's girls who are finding YouTube fame, doing makeup tutorials, and um, being signed on to major entertainment networks to do reviews and tutorials, um, different ways to spread news and give third-party third validation um, to products. So similar to YouTube, um, Vine celebrities are kind of in the same boat as Shane Dawson and other YouTube stars. Um, they can make thousands of dollars off a six second Vine. Like, how much do you think is kind of the max for a six second Vine? Like, throw a number out there that someone can make. Any thoughts? You can make up to $50,000 for a six second Vine, um, depending on the brand and depending on the number of followers that one of the YouTube stars um, has. Um, Jerome Jar is a great example of one of these YouTube stars. Megan Signoli was kind of one of the first. Um, you can see an example of Warner's Bras. They worked with um, Megan to do a promoted Vine. So what happens here is that these Vine content creators create the Vine, Warner would share it on their Vine, and she would re-Vine it. Um, so I have a couple examples because I can't just post a screen grab and it's six seconds long of Vine, so I think we have time for them. Um, so this is an example of one of Megan Signoli's. She did this for Gap. <laughs>
Target, even Target, who's a huge brand, got in on the trend um, very subtly. Um, and there were tons of photoshops made about Alex. And in a later interview, he actually said that he was scared to leave his house um, because he was getting recognized so often. And users found out where he lived, and they were trying to take selfies, and they were obsessed with this just regular guy who works at Target. So um, I'm a little sad because I worked at Target all through <laughs> high school. <laughs> and I never became a meme, but you know, here I am now. Still time. Yeah, there's still time. There's still time. Maybe if I get a holiday job at Target, I, I too could become a meme. Um, so it's easy now to be famous, right? So one minute you're a kid at the fair with his grandpa, and the next minute you're on Ellen. So some brands can get away with talking to teens in their language. Um, some examples of these, a great one is DiGiorno's Pizza. Um, here's a shot of their website where they kind of promote their brand values, you know, simple pizza, simple ingredients, uh, we're nice and fresh and, and healthy, wink wink. Um, so here's a shot of their website and sort of their brand values. They do things a little differently. Um, when it comes to their Tumblr account. They're not trying to push fresh ingredients here. Um, they're creating interesting, funny content that fans and followers want to engage with and share. And um, they really know how to use different networks to reach different audiences, and they do it quite well. Um, so for example, it's not a curl earring, it's DiGiorno. Um, they have you know, other cutesy things, you know, uh, DMs from DiGiorno and um, Pizza Hearts and Pizza's Bay and all that kind of stuff. They're also working in real time. Um, so some of the best engagement and campaigns are really unplanned or news jacked. Um, DiGiorno last year started live tweeting last year's live edition of The Sound of Music, if you remember that. And it's arguably kind of where the brand first got recognized for having this funny Twitter presence. And it kind of happened organically. They just jumped in, saw people that were tweeting about The Sound of Music, and related it to pizza. Um, so very interesting. <laughs> Another interesting one is IHOP. Um, so when most people think of IHOP, they usually think of 2 a.m. visits filled with regret um, and not <laughs> teens heading out to get pancakes. Um, but they've taken to kind of speaking in some of those banned words from Chick-fil-A. Um, you can see some of their tweets here when the whole squad looking fresh with pictures of pancakes. 12,000 retweets and 9,000 favorites. Um, retweet of I hop is bay, all pancake everything. Um, they kind of take rap lyrics and include pancakes on them. Um, and so far, and take it with a grain of salt, they're, according to their agency, it's working. So um, we'll see. So I'm sure everyone, if you if you've ever stepped foot on the internet in the past week, um, you saw an image of Kim Kardashian, and a lot of brands hopped on to try to break the internet. Um, but in the age of you know, the internet and social media, if you've had to run it through corporate, have your boss Larry sign off on it, but he's in a meeting till four, and then it's time to go home, and then maybe tomorrow you could do it, but you know, it has to go through this quick approval process, but that approval process lasts a week. Um, the internet, internet moves really fast, and if you don't do it right away, you're going to get eaten a lot. Um, these are two who did it pretty well. Um, so Nissan, very simple, but quick. Um, ours is bigger. And the Met Museum was great. You know, as I said, here at the Met, we have artworks that break the internet, too, um, with this image that looks very strikingly similar to Kim Kardashian. So, and that's the thing. If you don't get to it quick enough, and it's too much of a stretch for your brand, um, you're going to kind of look desperate, and people are going to get on top of you really quickly. So Mentos tried it, you know, a day later they tweeted at BuzzFeed, hey, look at us. Um, they got a lot of delete your accounts, no, <laughs> what the F, no. Um, and lastly, for this section, um, if you try to shoehorn your brand into something, people and a lot of these are for teens, but just people in general, they'll notice. And I think teens are more pretty and open to looking at brands who do this because they've seen it all. Um, this one makes no sense. Durex. Literacy and sexual health go hand in hand, just like Durex and relationships. Don't you think? Hashtag Internation Literacy Day. What the hell is ha Happy International Literacy Day? What even is that? And it doesn't relate to your brand. You're a condom brand, not a, not a book brand. 
Um, the other one is September 11th, which is obviously a horrible day um, for everyone. Um, Build-A-Bear tried to put their brand into a 9-11 tweet, and it's just awful. Um, you know, it, it just looks forced and, and not good. So don't try to shoehorn your brand into something that it doesn't belong in, um, because it doesn't look genuine. So let's be realistic. Um, you don't have a huge budget, you're not as cute as Shane Dawson, and your product really isn't super excited in the first place. So how can you kind of stay up to date and, and be a part of the conversation and connect to this audience? Stay up to date with trends. Um, Urban Dictionary has a word of the day. Um, whenever I pulled the screen grab, it was a lumber sexual, uh, which uh, Shane Dawson could probably also be described as a lumber sexual, I guess. Um, I think you can get these through an email feed as well, so you will always know what what the kids are talking about um, through Urban Dictionary's word of the day. And also just staying up with trends on Twitter. Um, you know, Alex from Target was trending. You can also change your settings on here. So I have this set to Pittsburgh. I can change it to the United States. Um, always click on the hashtag to see kind of what's going on here because some of these I might not have any idea. Um, also understand how quickly the internet moves. Um, remember the Harlem Shake, you guys? <laughs> Uh, what would happen if you tried to put out a Harlem Shake video now? Um, nothing, probably, and you would get laughed at. So um, just staying up with how quickly things move. I, it feels like the Harlem Shake was here and gone within a week. Um, so don't be that guy. Don't be, don't be slow folk. Um, not everything has to be a meme, has to go viral. Um, General Electric does these great six-second vines. Six, six second vines. Um, six second science vines and they're just they're like little science tips and tricks and you know they show oxygen and things like that um, all in six seconds they're really interesting um, U of M is another great one they're on snapchat they do a lot of campaigns where um, they this is kind of a, an iconic uh, thing on their campus this block so in this particular one they did a contest where they sent out an image of it. Um, Taco Bell also does this too. They're really great at, great at this. Sent an image out, said, hey, decorate this and you might win a prize. And we'll, we'll send out our favorites in a Snapchat story. Um, so they got a ton of submissions and it's something fun, engaging, something people want to do. Um, and they want to show themselves off and potentially win a prize. You know, I think the prize is usually like a t-shirt. It's nothing crazy, um, but it's something fun and interesting. Um, and going along with making your content interesting, uh, I follow the 80-20 rule, which is pretty common. 80% of the content that I post is fun, engaging, interesting. 20% of it is kind of newsy, salesy. Um, I took a look at some Instagram accounts that I really like. The first one is Teeks, which is a, a very, actually high-end, um, fancy pants shoe brand, shoe brand that creates um, very nice flats uh, for all the ladies that know how hard it is to find a good pair of flats. Um, they, for Halloween, you know, instead of posting just a regular old pair of shoes or, you know, just a happy Halloween image, they actually took, um, these are all, I don't know if you guys can tell on the screen, but these are all um, people wearing white teeks. And they made oh. a, cute, a cute little ghost out of it. Um, so it's especially interesting, but still shows off their brand. So I thought that was really cool. Um, this other one is Starbucks. So this is kind of, I didn't realize that there were so many, um, so many spices inside of a chai tea latte. But this breaks down all the spices inside in like a really visual, nice, appealing way. Um, so make your content visually interesting. Be consistent. Um, Jenna Marbles is another famous YouTuber. You can see up here she has 14 million followers. Um, she makes a new vlog every Wednesday, which encourages people to subscribe and they know that they'll be getting a fresh piece of content every Wednesday. Um, in every video, she says at the end, hey, check back next Wednesday, subscribe, you know, I'll have new content next Wednesday. Gives people kind of a schedule um, to stay on top of, and they know when to come back to look for more. Be sure to interact with your fans. Um, so Shane Dawson, again, Shane, are you watching? Um, he is pretty good at interacting with his fans as well, even though he has a lot of followers. I think he has about 3 million, if I remember correctly. 
Um, but, you know, she, this girl, you know, said, the, her friend asked her who her favorite YouTubers are. She said, hmm, maybe Shane Dawson. All he did was send three smileys. He had 26 retweets and 151 favorites for three smileys. Um, so people want to hear, if they're singing your praises, they appreciate hearing from you. And they he appreciate hearing from brands they like and people that they like. Um, you can see down here, her friends are freaking out. OMG, living for this. This is great. You're a magnet. Show me your ways. Um, another thing that you can do is build a community. So I mentioned in the beginning, teens aren't using Facebook. They don't like Facebook. They don't want Facebook. Somewhat true, somewhat a lie. Um, we have seen great success with um, building Facebook groups where our incoming classes uh, connect with each other. So we already have a class of 2019 group and it's a private closed group. So what that means is we actually check to make sure that they've applied or been admitted before we let them be in this group. Um, so it's a closed kind of group way for people that are this age to interact with each other. And I think that Facebook is going to be putting a lot more emphasis on these groups because they actually intru introduced a standalone app specifically for groups. Um, so I'm hoping that that will have an impact um, on this group. So whenever they join, we have a pinned post that says, hey, you know, post where you're from, post your major, post what's going on. Um, so we've had great interaction people posting selfies and saying, you know, um, they also, another trend is follow me on Twitter and Instagram, follow me on Snapchat, connect with me over here. Um, so they're making those connections and building that community in a private group. Um, so it's definitely interesting to watch these kind of grow. Um, so if you are trying to build kind of a community within your brand, I think Facebook groups actually are a good way um, to do that. Um, so know that even the best brands mess up. And it's, you're going to mess up on social media if you're managing a brand at some point. Probably not to this um, degree, hopefully, but um, you guys may have seen this in the news. Um, DiGiorno Pizza. Um, again, I sang their praises earlier. They tried to tap into the hashtag why I stayed, which was connected to um, the whole Ray Rice incident. Obviously very, very terrible. Um, they clearly did not research the hashtag before they tweeted this, and they said, why I stayed, you had pizza. <laughs> Making light of a horrible situation. Um, so they actually went through anyone that expressed any sort of discontent with them, was mad at them. They individually went through and addressed them by name and said, you know, we never intentionally made light of this, accept our apologies. Um, it seemed to work for them. It came off as being very transparent um, and was a great strategy in my opinion. Um, this is another kind of famous one. Um, the American, this is really, I can't, can you believe it? this happened in 2011? I was researching for this presentation, I was like, I've been tweeting way too long. Um, so the American Red Cross, uh, they accidentally posted, this is obviously probably supposed to be to their personal account, um, Ryan found two more four bottle packs of dogfish heads by such beer. When we drink, we do it right. Hashtag getting slizzard. Um, the Red Cross then um, deleted the tweet. They posted an update that said we deleted the red tweet. For us to share, the Red Cross is sober and we've confiscated the keys. Um, they turned it into something positive with dogfish beer. This was actually really great. Um, so any fans that tweeted with, you know, they made kind of getting slizzard sort of a trending topic hashtag and encourage people to donate to the Red Cross um, in honor of them. So turning a negative into a positive. Um, another thing to keep in mind when you're creating content or trying to interact with the community, and this is a, again, is for any age, um, teens, anyone, Think, what emotion does this appeal to? Um, is it surprising? Does it excite? Um, does it promote empathy or humor? Um, people want to, I share because I feel something whenever I see it. Um, when I'm interacting and sharing, it's because I felt some type of way about it, whether sometimes it's because I'm mad, um, it made me laugh, or made me sad, um, unfortunately. Think about what emotion your content appeals to. And that's pretty much all I got. Um, so again, you, oh, go ahead. Do you see a trend if, if you just in the United States as far as you know Facebook's rising around the world because some people are just getting it, but 
Is Facebook peaked in the United States and Twitter's taken over? Do you, where do you see the curves, or does it depend really on the community, the demographic? Yeah, I would say it depends on the demographic because I know um, for Twitter, actually, senior citizens are the most rising demographic that are joining Twitter. Um, I think that different people are using the different networks for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, you know, I deal with college students and they're not that interested in Facebook right now and high school students too because they're like, I have everything I need right in this little microcosm. I have, I have everything. You know, I have my friends. I have everyone I need to talk to. But I think once they leave a campus where, you know, they're not in this little bubble anymore and they do want to stay in touch, I think Facebook is a great way. Mm -hmm. So I think it does kind of connect on a or relate to the demographics of the community. But I definitely see, I mean, especially with the younger generation, the, the apps like Instagram and Snapchat are definitely on the rise. Um, just, just how they want to communicate with each other. I think they're really getting bombarded by a lot of the, you know, don't, don't put this on the internet and I'll see it and, and that type of thing. So I don't think Facebook will ever go away. Um, even in my personal life, I'm like, sending a Facebook invite, uh, you know? But it's the best way for me to keep in touch with my friends, so. It's a long-winded answer, I guess. Any other questions? All right, well, if you want to follow up, have any questions, want to tweet at me, um, my email is just crevesky at pointpark.edu, and um, my Twitter handle is at Chelsea Robo. So thank you for, for coming to my presentation. Hope you learned something. Watch some Shane Dawson videos. <laughs> <laughs> he won, right? <laughs> he did win. He did win. He won the 250 grand. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he did. Um, there was kind of some some controversy on that actually, because I don't think a lot of people liked his movie. Yeah, it was right. Very, very much like his video. It was raunchy. It was. I didn't see it. Did you see the movie? I didn't see the movie. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So that's the other thing too is that people were mad too because they were like, okay, you picked one director who had some ties, um, you know, to people, but you pick this other guy and base it on voting and he has all these crazy YouTube fans and like millions of teen girls that are, aren't even watching the show but would just vote just for him. So some people were mad that he had that existing fan base already. I think they, if they do a season two, I think they might take out the uh, voting part, to be honest. I'm fairly certain that same girl, I was giving away two tickets to the thing on my blog that particular day. And yeah. I'm fairly certain that same girl, I think I received probably 250 tweets from her yes. in a 10 hour period. What? Yeah. And I'm like, you well, are I'll younger than my daughter, get off. Yeah. Well, I'll get off the internet. Yeah. Yeah. She was. She's like, I love Shane Dawson. I love Shane Dawson. And I, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's nuts. She was my inspiration, wherever she is right now. Somewhere in Thanks, guys. Thank you. Very good.